What's up, guys? Welcome to the first edition of Trade Targets here on the Fantasy Stock Exchange. Uh, before I get into it, I'm actually joined by one of my really good buddies. He is the founder of Underground Sports Philadelphia, uh, Mr. Kyle Bennett. How you doing today, man? It is an absolute pleasure to be joined by you here, and uh, thanks for having me, man. I'm, I'm stoked. Yeah, dude, I was really excited uh, to get you on here. You know, I don't, I don't know if you watched uh, the previous weeks, but I had Dylan, our, our buddy Dylan, on here a couple weeks ago. We had a whole lot of fun, um, and I, I, you know, I've been looking for guests to come on, and I was like, oh, duh, the answer's been right in front of me the whole time, my good buddy Kyle. So really excited to get you on here, really excited to talk about buy low, sell high guys after week one, and I'm going to kick us right off with a buy low. My favorite one is going to be Austin Eckler. Um, so Austin Eckler in week one, he went 19 attempts on the ground for 84, 84 yards, which pretty respectable. Um, but the real issue with Eckler is that he was only targeted one time and he came down with that for a whole three yards and it was against Cincinnati. So not even like some kind of prestigious team out there. Um, so a lot of Austin Eckler players are discouraged right now. Um, but his targets are undoubtedly going to go up. You, you know, you have a talent like Austin Eckler. There, there's no way that he's only going to see one target every single week. Plus the coaches have already come out and said, look, that was our bad. We're going to get him more involved in the, in the passing game moving forward. Um, so I think people can kind of chalk week one up as a bit of an outlier for Austin Eckler's season already. Um, like I said, though, this has left a sour taste in a lot of people's mouth. You combine the lack of targets with the emergence of Josh Kelly, who literally Came out of nowhere after Justin Jackson went down with injury. Josh Kelly found the end zone. He had, I believe, 16 rush attempts. Yeah, Josh Kelly is going to be more than likely splitting time with Austin Eckler. Uh, but Austin Eckler is very much so the prime target out there in the backfield. I don't care if it's Tyrod Taylor's offense. I don't care when Justin Herbert takes over. Um, Austin Eckler is going to rebound, and he's going to rebound in a big way after week one. So if you have an Austin Eckler owner in your league, who has soured on him way too much after one performance. This seems like a really good time to go out and buy low on Austin Eckler. Yeah, I totally agree. I mean, Joshua Kelly, like you said, he's going to, you know, cut into some of Eckler's time, but the coaching staff said that's on them. They're going to get the targets there. The offense doesn't really tailor to running back targets, um, but they're going to get Eckler more involved. I do think, you know, it's, it's going to be frustrating a little bit, especially since a lot of people did spend, you know, if you're in a 12-man league, a late first-round pick, early second-round pick on Austin Eckler. Um, but this is an offense right now with Tyrod Taylor who he's not getting the ball down the field. We saw that because Keenan Allen did not have, you know, the target share that he normally has uh, in week one against a Bengals defense that's not a world beater. So we're going to see a lot of checkdowns to the running back, get Eckler out in space, and uh, he's going to be running rampant. I mean, he's got matchups against beatable defenses for the type of player he is in the next, like, five weeks. They play the Chiefs, which is just going to be a, a high-intensity offensive game back and forth. Uh, they play the Panthers, who we saw, you know, Josh Jacobs was able to take advantage of the Panthers' defense when he got his opportunities. They play the Buccaneers, the Saints, and the Jets all in their next five games. Austin Eckler should be back to form. Uh, I would say even starting Sunday at 425 against the Chiefs in a high-scoring affair on paper. Yeah, I completely agree. And before we move on from Austin Eckler, there's one more thing that I want to mention on him. And last year, he was lined up as a receiver plenty of times. They didn't really do that um, at all this past week. And I think they kind of know that that's something they have to let Austin Eckler get involved with again this season. So it'll definitely be interesting to see how things shake up over there for the Chargers. But one thing's for sure, Austin Eckler's going to rebound. And if someone is overreacting in your league after week one, you got to go out and buy low on them. Um, so I will let you take over. I'll let you uh, go ahead and showcase your first sell high of the week. Yeah, the sell high, which should always be a week one sell high. It is Jamison Crowder, the target machine for the New York Jets. Uh, he seems to be the only wide receiver that Adam Gase likes his quarterbacks to get the ball to arguably the only player he likes his quarterbacks to get the ball to. Uh, Jameson Crowder has just been an absolute target machine since coming to the New York Jets. 122 targets last year, 13 in week one. 
for Sorry. the Jets. Uh, seven receptions, 115 yards, and he did tally a touchdown. Uh, this Jets team, who knows where they're going to be in like two weeks. Uh, people who are wide receiver three flex, you know, hungry. Maybe they lost Cortland Sutton to injury. Uh, you know, there's a, a number of wide receivers out there dealing with soft tissue injuries right now. If, you, if somebody is like clamoring for like an early season, like I need to just get by until a bye week type of player, Jamison Crowder is who you want to go and sell them on. Uh, you know, you got to be like Madame Zeroni and holes. And, you know, this is what you need to do in order to win your championship. You need to take Jamison Crowder, but you need to give me a third round pick for him. <laughs> you need to sell high uh, on Jamison Crowder because he's really the only weapon on this team. Sure, you can talk about Chris Herndon, but as Mikey said in one of his blog posts, Chris Herndon's a lie. Um, so, I mean, you can't really trust him. Jamison Crowder's really the only weapon in this Jets offense right now that can be trusted. He's the only guy that Sam Darnold seems to trust. Le'Veon Bell's hamstrings are messed up, even though he said they weren't. This is a guy that if you own him, go sell him for as much as you can because his target share is going to continue to stay this consistent if he had 122 targets last season, 13 in week one, I, I only see it going up from here. And if you own him and can get away with selling Jamison Crowder off of your bench, please do yourself a favor and go do it. Yeah, I think you could probably get an upgrade at receiver um, or, or draft pick compensation, depending on the league that you're in. Or even if you know, you're, you're hurting for a running back, you might be able to flip Jamison Crowder for a pretty decent running back. Uh, to your point, I do think that he is going to continue to see high targets, at least for now. But you got to think, eventually Brashad Perriman's going to get involved. Eventually Denzel Mims is going to get his shot. Eventually this entire offense is just not going to be hobbled by injury. Maybe Adam Gase will realize what he has in Le'Veon Bell when Bell gets back from injury in a week or two or however long he's out. Maybe Le'Veon Bell starts getting more targets. The point is with Jamison Crowder is that he had so many targets this week, he's probably going to see that many targets at least for another two or three weeks. But this is a guy that you want to capitalize on when you can. Because when that entire team is healthy again, he's probably not going to be seeing 13 targets a week anymore. You know, like you want to get him out of your hair now and see if you can bring in a good return, especially after a monster week. And they're going to be playing in negative game scripts for the next five weeks. The Jets play the 49ers, the Colts, the Broncos, the Cardinals, and the Chargers. Luckily for them, three out of those five games are at home. But those are all negative game script games, in my opinion, for the New York Jets. They're going to be throwing the ball. And Jamison Crowder is the one that's going to be catching the ball. And uh, who's to say Adam Gase is even the head coach by, you know, the time that Broncos game rolls around because the way the Jets played in week one was abysmal. So we might even see a new coaching staff. And who's to say that doesn't change things up for Jamison Crowder. So get him off your hands right now and, and upgrade at a position, get draft pick compensation and uh, take the wins where you can get them. And it starts with selling Jamison Crowder after the week he had. So let me ask you something. Do you think it would be worth it if you can't sell him this week to potentially keep him out on your trade market for the next, I don't know, two or three weeks since he should be seeing that early, early season role? Maybe you might be able to get even more value for him this time in a week or two? Yeah, I mean, there, there's definitely an opportunity where I think Crowder's going to be the number one target in this offense for at least the next couple of weeks. Um, and he's going to see those targets. He's a guy that Sam Darnold trusts to throw the ball to obviously getting 13 targets in one game against a Buffalo Bills defense where pretty sure Crowder was seeing a lot of Tredavious White as well. Um, you know, so there's opportunities for Crowder to continue to build on this game and continue to build his trade value where you could end up getting eventually maybe that third round pick. And speaking of trade value, I know you got a, uh, a couple buy lows to talk about here. So give me your first buy low of the day. Yeah, my first buy low was a rookie wide receiver. Uh, a lot of people were probably disappointed because he did miss time in this game uh, due to an injury, but he did come back. And looking at the routes that he was running uh, against your Carolina Panthers, he's Ugh. just a ready-made NFL wide receiver, and that's Henry Ruggs the uh, third. The Las Vegas Raiders look good. Their offense looks explosive. There's opportunities now for Derek Carr to get the ball out and spread it around the field. And – more likely than not, Henry Ruggs is going to become the number one wide receiver in this offense sooner rather than later. Um, I really like his upside. He only had 55 yards in his debut, but he did also add 11 rushing yards on two attempts. So, I mean, 
that that weird end around opportunity is there for a guy like Henry Ruggs in this offense. And, you know, it's Henry Ruggs and then everybody else, in my opinion. You know, there's Brian Edwards, Hunter Renfro, Nelson Aguilar, but those three guys are like in their own little category trying to fight for, uh, you know, opportunities between somebody like Henry Ruggs that the Raiders used high draft capital on, a guy like Darren Waller who's going to be the number one target for Derek Carr because of the type of quarterback he is, and then Josh Jacobs. Henry Ruggs is leaps and bounds ahead of any wide receiver on the Raiders roster to me, and uh, you need to go out and get him because I like his upside for the rest of the season moving forward if this is what the Raiders offense is going to look like. Yeah, I like Henry Ruggs as a buy low um, a lot because the five targets that he saw this week, I can definitely see that being more of his floor than anything this season. I think they are going to try and get him the ball a bit more, especially as he earns uh, more trust and develops more as an NFL receiver as the season goes on. Um, And I think this is absolutely the perfect time to get him because as soon as the end of week two, his price might skyrocket. Um, Over the next four weeks, he has New Orleans. That's a catch-up game. Uh, New England could be a fairly even game, but then he's got Buffalo and Kansas City right before the bye week, and those should also be catch-up games for the Raiders. And in catch-up games, you you often want to get your guys going. You want to hit that home run. Who better to do it than Henry Ruggs, who is fast as all hell. Uh, So I think Henry Ruggs could see an uptick in targets as soon as this week and could see an uptick in production in general as soon as this week against Uh, New Orleans and that'll actually be exciting because they're playing a Monday night game against the Saints so everyone can can see uh, Henry Ruggs in prime time and I'm I'm personally really excited for that so I really do like the call to go out and buy Henry Ruggs low right now and it's going to be in that Las Vegas Star Wars dome so even better oh yeah no I'm so excited for that see I was one of the lucky well I live in Carolina now. I got to see the Panthers versus the Raiders on local TV. So I'm not going to say I'm lucky, but I did get to see Henry Ruggs play and he looked pretty damn good. Um, So I'm going to move on to my first sell high of the day and I'm selling Mr. Week One, Sammy Watkins. So Sammy Watkins, in recent memory, he seems to get our hopes up at the beginning of every year. Uh, Last year, I'm pretty sure he started the season with like a 45 point fantasy game or something like that this year a little bit more quiet but still stellar caught seven to nine targets for 82 yards had a score completely tore up Houston Um, if I'm not mistaken I think Sammy Watkins was the highest targeted player by Pat Mahomes in week one Um, but that's that's the issue it's week one and Sammy Watkins loves doing this you know moving forward I would expect to see more from Tyreek Hill I'd expect to see more from Miko Hardman um, and Clyde edwards Hilaire. He was targeted like twice the entire game. His strength is, believe it or not, after his 136 yards, his strength is not on the ground. His strength is in the air, and they're going to capitalize on that a lot sooner than later. So Sammy Watkins is definitely going to start losing targets to the running back. He's going to lose targets to Miko Hardman and Tyreek Hill because there's no way Tyreek Hill stays as quiet as he did in the first game. Despite him putting up 15 or 16 fantasy points in week one, that was still a quiet game. Um, in my opinion, Watkins is nothing more than a weekly boom or bust play, and he's got the tendency to bust significantly more than he booms. This is the perfect time. You know, I don't know who went out there and drafted Sammy Watkins, but if you did, capitalize now and get him off of your roster for some compensation. Yeah, my goodness. Like, you want to talk about the poster boy of week one? It is Sammy Watkins. Like, he, he just loves going out on those Thursday night games, Sunday night games, whenever the Chiefs end up playing their week one matchup, and he just delivers. And you would think a lot of us who play fantasy football by now would learn to use like a late round draft pick on Sammy Watkins because this is what he does. You draft him for week one, and then you go sell to the, the fantasy players that aren't as in tap as guys like me and Mikey, uh, you know, that's where you make your bread and butter is making those calculated risk picks like a Sammy Watkins who is in an explosive offense and we'll see more weeks like this, but it's not going to be every week. He's a boomer bust type of guy, especially with all the weapons in that Kansas city offense. And like Mikey said, you add Clyde Edwards, a now uh, who's going to catch the ball, Travis Kelsey, Mecole Hardman and Tyreek Hill. There's just so many options for Patrick Mahomes. He's like a kid in a candy store every single week. So Sammy Watkins is the obvious 
just just go sell him to the people like let the people know here he is our our poster boy of uh of week one sammy watkins at week one watkins sell him while you can now I'm going to go on to my second buy low, and that's going to be Hayden Hurst, a uh, tight end for the Atlanta Falcons. So he only saw five targets on Sunday, only reeled in three of them for 38 yards, but there are significantly better days ahead for Hayden Hurst. Um, you know, Matt Ryan came out and threw 450 yards against Seattle. He targeted Julio Jones, Calvin Ridley, and Russell freaking Gage at least, at least, 11 times each. Moving forward, Hurst is definitely going to demand more targets than five, especially in an offense where three different receivers are seeing 11 or more targets. Um, and I, I fully expect Hayden Hurst to start eating into some of their targets. Maybe not Julio Jones's targets, but I can definitely see Russell Gage forfeiting a few targets each game to Hayden Hurst. And I can see Calvin Ridley losing a look or two along the way as well. Um, I think Hayden Hurst is a great tight end to buy low on, especially if you punted on the position. Uh, like me personally, if I don't get Travis Kelsey, George Kittle, or Mark Andrews on draft day, I don't grab a tight end until double digit rounds. Hayden Hurst is the perfect guy that you want to target as a buy low candidate if you are needy at the tight end position right now. This is a guy that you should be going out and getting, especially if you're a Blake Jarwin owner. Uh, uh, don't remind you know. me out for the season this is a perfect player you know matt ryan has the opportunity to lead the nfl in passing yards this year 450 yards in week one is absolutely asinine like you said 11 targets or more for each of those three wide receivers they all had nine receptions and over 100 yards you know dan quinn might get fired mid-season because if the falcons keep you know, losing games the way they do. There's no reason for them to lose a game where three wide receivers have over 100 yards, all three have nine receptions, and they end up losing by double digits. Hayden Hurst is going to get involved in this offense. There's nobody behind him either like there was in Baltimore. He is the number one guy, um, and I think this is where we finally see why Hayden Hurst was a first-round pick. Um, even though he is older than most typical uh, first-round picks, I think he's got a bright future in this Atlanta offense. It fits his style of play perfectly. He's a pass-catching tight end, and uh, he's going to see the end zone a lot in an offense that, like I said, could potentially lead the league in passing yards. Yeah, and that's the thing. In a, in a high-octane offense like that, anyone can, can break out. And I think Hayden Hurst has probably the best chance to do it if we're not counting Julio Jones and Calvin Ridley because, you know, they both – already have names for themselves. Um, but yeah, Hayden Hurst is definitely a guy. Go out, see what it's going to take to get him. I I, I want to buy him low pretty much everywhere. Admittedly, I'd probably even overspend a little bit if they're asking for a little bit more than you anticipated on him because I, I, I really think this is going to be one of the few outlier weeks for Hayden Hurst. Especially since he's a tight end one in real life on a football team. It's not like he's a backup tight end like he was in Baltimore. He's the legitimate only tight end option for the Atlanta Falcons right now. He's going to see a lot more production as the season goes on. Yeah, for sure. Uh, so now I'll let you go back to your guys. So give me your next sell high. Who would have thought we'd be talking about Adrian Peterson in 2020 as a guy that you'd want to sell high on? Uh, he went out and balled with his new team, the Detroit Lions, uh, 93 yards on the ground, was even involved in the passing game, caught uh, you know, a couple of passes for 21 yards. And uh, Adrian Peterson is a guy that a lot of us want to overlook early in the season uh, because nobody wants a guy who's just a strict downhill runner on their fantasy team. They want that upside of being able to pass catch and you know have the big game. You need a guy like Adrian Peterson on your roster early in the season, especially when, you know, teams like the, the Broncos and Melvin Gordon are going to be facing the Pittsburgh Steelers in week two. Uh, we saw what the Steelers defense did to Saquon Barkley on Monday Night Football. That was nuts. You need somebody that's going to get those tough yards and 93 yards from a guy like Adrian Peterson on the ground. You will take that each and every week if you can. And that's going up against the Chicago Bears defense that – isn't as you know tenacious as they were a couple years ago, but they're still pretty formidable. And for AP to go out there, still kind of learning this offense as well. Uh, just got there like a week or two ago, 
uh, I was very impressed with what I saw from Adrian Peterson. And if you are desperate for a running back, go sell Adrian Peterson to somebody who needs him because he's a, he's a guy that's going to help you in terms of selling him. You know, you're going to get a decent amount back, but you're also going to help the person that you're selling him to early in the season. The Lions have an early bye week this year, too. By week five, I expect Adrian Peterson to start fading away uh, in favor of our guy, DeAndre Swift. Uh, so he's not going to be a long-term option for you, but if you can get by the next, you know, three, four weeks with Adrian Peterson as a flex play, as a, a fill-in RB2, that's something that you can entice a lot of people with. And on name alone, it's Adrian Peterson. Yeah, absolutely. So take everything that Kyle just said, type that in a message, send it to a very running back needy person in your league and see if you can sell Adrian Peterson. Because again, Adrian Peterson down, down the line, he is going to lose work to DeAndre Swift as soon as DeAndre Swift really becomes more of an NFL caliber running back. He is going to lose work to carry on Johnson once carry on Johnson can actually be healthy. If carry on Johnson Who? can ever be healthy. Who? So, exactly. <laughs> but with but with Adrian Peterson, you, you know, he looked great in week one. Um, but I just – you can't expect him to have 90 to 95 yards every single week. And if you watch the game between Detroit and Chicago, DeAndre Swift was the one getting the looks closer to the goal line. You know, Adrian Peterson was their guy in between the 20s. But they let DeAndre Swift come on and play in those crucial – uh, conversion points of the game. You know, there's a reason why DeAndre Swift had the rushing touchdown. There's a reason why DeAndre Swift was targeted on the potential game-winning touchdown, which still can't believe he dropped. I, my heart breaks for him over that one. Uh, but the point is, Adrian Peterson, his good-looking play in Detroit, I think is going to be severely capped. So if you can um, make the most out of his week one success, I think you got to do it. I'll give you somebody you should be contacting immediately to sell Adrian Peterson to go find the Miles Sanders owner in your league and sell them on Adrian Peterson. Yeah. I mean, there's a chance that if somebody, if somebody went out and they drafted Miles Sanders, you know, they are definitely in need of an early running back replacement. Um, you know, you, you are the Eagles insider. So you'll know better than I am better than I do, but you know, Miles Sanders didn't play week one. From what I understand, his status for week two is very much in the air right now. Um, so Adrian Peterson could be a good fill-in for a guy like that. And a running back dealing with a soft tissue hamstring injury is never good. Um, and as much as I love Miles Sanders, like that's tough. And, you know, you need to have somebody on your roster that can fill in for somebody that could miss weeks at a time due to an injury like that for the position he plays. And let's not forget – Adrian Peterson is only, you know, two years removed from having over a thousand rushing yards with the Washington football team. So something to pay attention to, especially for teams that are, you know, looking for that early running back necessity due to injury. Absolutely. So I know you got one more guy on the list today. I believe he is a buy low. So who might that be? We are buying low on the alleged slot receiver tight end extraordinaire with the Miami Dolphins, that's Mike Gesicki. Uh, he only had 30 yards uh, in their game against New England. They look terrible. Ryan Fitzpatrick is the magic running out. Who knows? Uh, but whenever Tua Tagovailoa comes in and eventually becomes the starter, Gesicki's targets are going to go through the roof. Uh, rookie quarterbacks, it's, it's a tale as old as time. Q Beauty and the Beast. They love dinking and dunking and having that safety blanket with the tight end position. Mike Gusecki is a, a freak athlete. He can line up in the slot and be a big, bulky, you know, slot receiver in this Miami offense. Uh, he can get up. He's a former volleyball player, so he's got the hops. He, if you lob a ball up to him, 50-50 ball, he's going to go up and get it like he's a big, strong, physical wide receiver. I love the freak athleticism. Uh, and I think his target share is only going to go up in this offense, especially if Devontae Parker's still dealing with that injury. Uh, Preston Williams didn't really see too much, and I kind of based that off of just what was going on in the game. Uh, but if Kiseki's, you know, the number three, number two A option in this offense for whatever quarterback is playing and a team that really couldn't get anything going on the ground, 
I like his upside for the rest of the season. Yeah, I, I like Mike Gusecki as a buy low candidate too. Um, you know, I was buying him as a potential top 10 tight end for the year. Uh, obviously, you know that there's going to be some ups and downs along the way playing for a team like the Miami Dolphins. But uh, I do think Mike Gusecki is going to have more good days than he's going to have bad days. And uh, week one was definitely a bad day and a perfect time uh, to capitalize on a nervous um, owner of Mike Gusecki. Yeah, I mean, you just look at the history over his career. His rookie season, he had 32 targets for 22 uh, receptions. Last season, that more than doubled. He went to 89 targets on the season for 51 receptions. His yards more than doubled from 202 to 570. His yards per reception went up a full two yards. And his yards per game went up from 12.6 to 35.6. Mike Gusecki's track record is just on the up and up right now. He had five touchdowns last year. I expect him to come close you know, either equal with that or eclipse that this year. Uh, if you can go and get him, whether he's on a waiver wire or somebody's roster, just kind of chilling there. Again, if you have Blake Jarwin, you should be going and targeting Mike Gusecki as your replacement for Blake Jarwin. Yeah, I'm noticing a trend. We have uh, Mike Gusecki and Hayden Hurst on here. Rough week for some of those upside, uh, you know, tight ends that were drafted as, as back end top 10 guys. But nonetheless, Mike Kosicki is a great guy to go out and buy low right now, especially if you can't get your hands on Hayden Hurst if you're attempting to do it. But if you can come away with one of those guys and you're, you're needy at the tight end position, you will be winning the trade market already in your league. <laughs> Easy. Um, but moving on, I got one final guy for you guys today. It's a sell high, and it's going to be Ronald Jones, otherwise known as Rojo from the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Uh, he looked Decent against the New Orleans Saints. He had 17 attempts for 66 yards, uh, caught two of his three targets for, for uh, 16 yards in the air. And the reason why I'm saying he's a sell high after commanding, you know, the, the large majority of the share of the backfield is because Leonard Fournette has been on this team for less than two weeks. You, you know, he has had very little time to learn the offense. He's had very little time to learn the plays, learn the routes, learn the blocking schemes like Leonard Fournette has not had enough time on this team to really be effective. And, you know, what Leonard Fournette did see the field, but he only had five attempts and he had one target, which he caught for 14 yards. Um, but his role, it, his role is going to increase more and more every week, especially as he gets comfortable in Tampa Bay and especially as Bruce Arians gets more comfortable with slotting Leonard Fournette in. So this to me, um, you know, you would have liked to see a, a tiny bit of a better game for Rojo. Maybe if he would have found the end zone in week one, you'd be able to get more value for him. But the fact that he had 17 attempts and he made Leonard Fournette look like a complete afterthought, you can use that as a really good selling point for Ronald Jones right now, especially people that are like that desperate at running back to the point where they're legitimately looking at Ronald Jones with Leonard Fournette there. Um, you know, his, his value is going to fall fast. You know, I, I don't know when Leonard Fournette is going to see the field, but when he does the one game where he comes out and he looks like a competent running back and he gives Rojo a run for his money, suddenly Rojo does not have the same appeal anymore. I'm going to jump ship while I can try to get a return for him. And I think this is a good time to sell. Yeah. And I mean, if you look at the Buccaneers next couple of matchups, they play the Carolina Panthers this coming week, then they go out to Denver, they host the Chargers, then they go to Chicago, and then the Green Bay Packers come to town 10 days later. There's maybe one more opportunity, and unfortunately it's against your Panthers, yes. where Ronald Jones <laughs> could you know, have another game that builds his stock, but going up against a Broncos team that we saw you know, kind of punish Derrick Henry a little bit, uh, who's a bigger bruiser type back, uh, the Chargers – I think that's a negative game script for the Buccaneers where it's going to be much more pass heavy. The Chicago bears again, they they're a team that shuts down the run pretty well. Uh, and then the green Bay Packers are looking phenomenal to start the season, you know, on offense. So that's going to be a negative game script game as well. Ronald Jones really only has one more opportunity to go out and build his stock for you to trade him. So if you can get him off your hands now, and like Mikey said, sell him on the fact that he got, a majority of the carries in this offense to start the season in a game that went bad fast for the Buccaneers on offense. Uh, I think Ronald Jones being sold high is the thing to do this week. Yeah. And 
the reason why I have him on as a sell high this week and not next week is because I do think Leonard, I mean, I hate saying this, but Carolina's defense is that bad to where I think Leonard Fournette, even if he only gets 10 or 11 touches this weekend, I think Leonard Fournette is going to remind everyone, hey, I'm here. Um, and that's one of the reasons why I want Ronald Jones to be sold this week. However, like you said, there is at least a coin toss chance that Ronald Jones is going to go out and run all over Carolina. I might see, you know, upwards of 90 to 100 total yards and even a score. If he does that, you definitely got to sell high because you're not going to get that kind of value from him uh, moving forward. But Ronald Jones, great sell high candidate uh, after a pretty decent week one where he commanded a big share of that backfield. And uh, I think that's pretty much going to do it uh, for us here today. Before we get going, uh, let me give you a chance to tell everyone what you do, what you're about, everything that you've got going on. Yeah, so uh, as Mikey said at the top of the video, I am the founder slash CEO slash host slash Swiss Army Knife of <laughs> Underground Sports Philadelphia. Uh, we're a uh, podcast network centered around the, the Philadelphia sports market. We have a fantasy show as well called fourth and goal uh you can check them out on twitter at fourth and goal usp you can follow underground sports philadelphia at underground phi and uh i'm just a big time sports fan big time fantasy football player been playing uh in a league with mikey since 2013 and uh i haven't looked back since and it's just a ton of fun to be able to you know talk shop when it comes to the nfl and put that fantasy spin on it so it's been a blast doing this and uh well, I'm more than willing to come back anytime you want to talk uh, buy or sell or anything in between because this was a ton of fun. Absolutely, man. And I'm definitely going to get you back on here sooner rather than later. Uh, it's always fun talking football with you. And uh, yeah, dude, I had, I had a ton of fun today. I think we brought in a lot of good information on the buy low and sell high targets uh, from our immediate week one reactions. And uh, with that being said, I will see everyone next week for the trade targets of week two.